Just a few months ago, Bugatti released the Mistral, their final automobile with the iconic quad turbo W16 unit before they inevitably go all electric and bore us all in a bloom of electric tire smoke. Or so we thought. Because unbeknownst to us, Bugatti were working on something in the back rooms that has come to the surface years after its initial conception. You're watching on Wanarak, and let's take a look at the Bugatti Chiron Profili. I, I, think, I think that's how you say it. This is the hidden Bugatti that the company have kept hidden away from us until now, from the back rooms of their headquarters in Mulsheim, France. Hearing from this car's designer, Frank Hale, it is evident that this car was designed to be a midpoint between the Pro Sport and the Super Sport. Ultimately, the Pro Sport is like the 911 GT3 in the Chiron lineup, and the Super Sport is like a 911 Turbo S. One's a hardcore track weapon, and one's a high-speed, low-altitude cruise missile that you can comfortably do a grand tour in. So, it's easy to see that this car is kind of like a 911 GT3 Touring, a more supple, livable version of the poor sport without the gigantic rear wing, and instead a much more subdued look. That is, if you can call this Batmobile of a car, subdued. So what exactly is different about this car, and why did Bugatti not officially release it to customers? Well, firstly, that front bumper is the same as the Pur Sport, and it contains a much more aggressive front aero than a standard Chiron. And the aero similarities carry over to the louvered front fenders, just like the Pur Sport. But there's a big change at the side of this car in the form of these new wheels. They're diamond cut, multi-spoke, and multi-coloured. This is completely different. They're totally unlike any Bugatti wheel that I have come across and for some reason actually remind me of the alloy designs that you get on new Audi A7s these days. That, that probably devalues this car, Bugatti probably don't want me to say that, but but I, I just think it's that way. It's a shame that these cars weren't produced in larger numbers because who knows what sort of wheel specs people would have created with this multicolored rim option available. Can we also talk about the spec of this car too? Like, wow! It sort of reminds me of Schmee's Senna with the blue and darker blue carbon, except the body colour is so light, almost like a tinted silver. They call this Argent Atlantique. Can you get any more sophisticated than that? It's classy and yet also sort of out there and I absolutely adore it. And the tinted blue carbon on the underside of this car looks flawless as always in Bugattis. Then we move towards my favourite section of this car, those rear three quarters. It still retains the gargantuous rear diffuser of the Pur Sport, coupled with half of the X-Wing design and those crazy 3D printed tailpipes, but this time of course the X-Wing isn't completed. No, no, it has a sort of duckbill-esque wing that reminds me of the wings on the newer Via Advantage Aston Martins, and I just love it. This design is supposed to mimic the Super Profili design of the Type 46 and Type 50 Bugattis. The Profili, I have no idea if that's how you say it, also kind of has two sides. At the top, you have this classy, sophisticated piece of beauty, and at the bottom, you have unadulterated automotive aggression draped in crazy looking carbon. The interior somewhat maintains this theme. You've got that sporty blue carbon, but that's contrasted by a rather classy quilted wicker effect that I just wish we saw in more hypercars. And to get this woven effect, they have used over two kilometers of leather strips. That's a lot of French cars. In terms of performance, the drivetrain is that of the Pur Sport, so you get just under 1500 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds, and best of all, the top speed is been raised from 217 miles per hour to 236 thanks to the removal of that huge rear wing. And unlike a lot of cars featured in this channel, it's not actually sold out yet. Just one has been created, and since Bugatti didn't want to offend any of their very powerful billionaire clientele, it will be auctioned off to the highest bidder in an auction in Paris in February. So who knows, maybe someone will turn up and get 500 quid for it. But uh, spoiler, probably not. As to the question as to why this car wasn't officially produced by Bugatti, well, probably fits in a niche that doesn't really exist. People that want the hardcore track version will probably just go off and buy the Pur Sport, and people that want the sort of GT car will buy the Super Sport. I, I don't think it really fits in, but who knows? There's a lot of billionaires and millionaires out there in the world these days, and uh, for some reason, I feel like they probably would have eaten this car up every single day. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, if you enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comment section down below, should Bugatti have made this car, or do you think that they were sensible and that no one would have actually wanted one? Anyway, that's it from me today, guys. Don't forget, I am going to be going to Tokyo Auto Salon very, very soon to get you the most exclusive content in the Japanese car world. So look forward to that in the new year. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.